What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. We're going to preview the Thursday night game, break down that Cardinals backfield. What on earth do you do with it? And we're going to talk about some keep, trade, cut, some big time players. Robert Woods in there. What do you do with him? Stay tuned. Hey, this is Deshaun Hamilton. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's yet another day, yet another wonderful day. I'm here with my two best friends. What a wonderful day. Jason and Mike are here as well. Ready for a great show. Today's show. Brooks and Al Borland gave me the thumbs up with that joke. Uh, See, I implied that they're my best friends and you are not. Oh. But you didn't catch it. I'm still living in blissful ignorance, and this is where I, I want to remain. Yeah, I didn't know that really needed to be voiced. You like, already knew it? Yeah. Okay. Because well. I'm Mike's best friend, yeah. remember? October 23rd. Welcome in. <laughs> Wednesday, October 30th. I, I put it in the calendar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Annual, so we'll re- we will remember. We have a spooky Thursday night, <laughs> Thursday night football game tomorrow. <laughs> Jason, it sounded like you were beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> Which would also be very, <laughs> very scary if you ever did. We have a Thursday night preview. Fantasy-wise, we're going to cover that today. Cardinals 49ers. We got keep trade cut. On the episode today, we've got some news. We've got buy or sell. You guys are both wearing jackets. Well, it's actually colder now in Arizona. Right. And all through the night and through the morning, the the big bad wolf has been coming for us all because there's been winds. Huffing? Huffing, puffing, I'm trying puffing. to blow my house down. It was so windy last night that I couldn't, like, I've never not slept because of wind. Yeah, it, our house was shaking. Everything that is outside your ho- house is now down the street. Yes, it's gone. I have plants that no longer have pots. I like have. How is that happening? I don't know, but the plants are there. The pots are gone. I gave one of my neighbors my garage cover. I said it again. My, my grill cover. Oh yeah, my grill cover. It belongs. You to You gotta someone. tie that down, Mike. Oh uh, well, I wasn't expecting hurricane force winds to come through. Yeah, it was. A, it was a strange night, a blustery night on. I guess it's a good thing it wasn't Halloween yet. We all have kids. We yes. we're gonna take them out trick or treating. How like you don't you can't cancel Halloween, right? You go trick or treat. We'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, I mean you go trick or treating. So if it's a hurricane, your children mean, with a pill. If you had the pillowcase, the oh, classic, they'd be flying. Oh. <laughs> they'd be gone. They would parachute they'd off be into Mary the Mary <laughs> out of the universe. The city of Phoenix has banned ghost <laughs> costumes tonight for fear of children flying. All right, um, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Stay connected to the Fantasy Footballers podcast. We're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. How's that going, Jay? Oh, your Insta? Yeah. Yeah, your quest for a post. Uh, it's getting so much closer. It normally like, takes two to three weeks to do a post. I, I have given a lot of thought. And this next post that I'm going to do, Ooh. make sure you're following. Oh, gosh. Because <laughs> the next post that comes is going to be important. It's going to be big. I've been working on it for a long time. This is a new strategy. Like a lot of people, they want to build their Instagram. They mm-hmm. post like two or three, four times a day. You have a new strategy. It's more anticipation. You don't want to miss it when it happens, right? Oh man, I'm following you right now. All yeah, right. that's at Jason FFL. Mike's at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Let's get into buy or sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week. I NFC West it. edition. Jason went four for yeah, five. That's right. And this week, I'm going. Five for five. I am very confident in all but one of my answers. All right. We're doing Interesting. A- AFC East edition. Tom Brady. Buy or sell a top seven finish Ooh. at Baltimore. High all sp- right. Confident. All man. right. Look, I'm going to sell right off the bat. He is currently, uh, and, and I know this upsets people. Uh, he's currently my quarterback seven. So you'd be like, well, then why, why would you not sure? He should be in the top seven. But No, the re- they, 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 I get it. Right. I, it makes sense to me. But he's at seven. I think probability, you know, that that's where you, you need to rank him. However, this is such a great week for streamers. You have guys that 
you can't necessarily say Gardner Minshew is going to be top five this week. Uh, D Sam Darnold against Miami is going to be a great – but there are so many of them that I'm confident that someone – or two are going to push him out of that spot. Sure, and you're just saying that the, there are six other quarterbacks you would start ahead of Tom Brady this week. Brady would be the seventh one you'd start. But when you look at him over the course of the first eight weeks, he's only finished inside the top seven one time. He's finished at the seven position three times, and then he's been outside of that by a wide margin four times. So the odds are not in his favor. I'm selling as well. So, all right. Well, John, now this one doesn't matter. Yeah. John Brown, over five catches versus Washington. He's had exactly five in each of the past four games. Ooh, so will so, he yeah. be over? I did not realize this was over. I thought it was five or more. My confidence wanes, but I'm going to buy. I He's believe, only done it twice, weeks one and week two. I believe that, you know, look, John Brown was my start of the week two weeks ago and honorary this last week until the – to, you know the crazy the Arizona storms. wins yeah the Arizona wins that yes. we're so famous for um we're up there 30 mile an hour wins and and you couldn't air it out here in Miami I think they're gonna have a great game I, I'm taking over. It, yeah well it's ex Washington and same difference in in Buffalo I will I'm gonna sell it you know the the way that Buffalo's winning games and by the way if you just want to reflect on Josh Allen year to year 2018, his, his completion percentage was 52.8%. 50, Not great, Bob. 2019 at 60%. Okay. He has a 60% completion okay. percentage. He's not, you know, they're not throwing the ball a ton. That's not been the recipe to success. He has, you know, games, uh, you know, this Eagles game, 169 yards passing the week before, 202, 219, 153. He hasn't hit 300 on the year. Uh, it's just not a high volume passing offense, so... John Brown over five. I'm not. I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to go ahead and sell. Yeah, it could happen, but I'm with Andy. I'm going to sell. I expect a lot of running. All right. One of the more enigmatic players. One of the players that I think fantasy owners have the toughest time. Well, he has been the playing. Butt, he has been the butt of fantasy jokes for so long. Devonte Parker. Of okay, he's super hyped coming into the the NFL. He's a first round pick. He's a stud talent. This would be Fails. like. Do you remember those top three wide receivers that year? They were so hyped. Was Parker? The, wait, which I think year it was, was it? Parker, Corey Coleman, and, and uh, Laquan Treadwell. Was that the year? You're, all I know you're is really those, on the island by yourself because you brought it up. All I know is those three guys were so hyped. I don't think Parker was that year. Sucked so much. This would Parker be, was before. This that. would be like Brashad Perryman stringing together a bunch of good games. You just have. The, the memory in the back of your mind the, of, of failure. But the, the buy sell here is Devontae Parker going up against the Jets, 10 fantasy points. On this season, he has three games above 10, four games under. He scored a touchdown in three of the past four games. As far as we know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is still the starting quarterback of this team. But I'm gonna, I'm, I will never. I'm not. I'm going to sell it because I'm not going to bet on Devontae Parker. Yes, and you would have lost a lot of money if you continued to bet against him. I'm buying. I think he can get to the ten points. I think he can get a couple of receptions and seventy yards in this matchup. Uh, I am going to buy as well. I remembered it was Josh Doxson I was thinking of. Josh uh, Doxson, yes. Corey Coleman, who Josh Doxson got activated is today. apparently coming back. The, the Vikings really liked what they saw. <laughs> But so he's uh, going to be in. Yeah, I'm going to buy. I think Devontae Parker has been good enough, and with Ryan Fitzmagic, I I think uh, he's going to have a deep ball. Yeah, I mean, on this season, you would have you would have won money three times, lost it four times. Lev Bell, 75 total yards at Miami. I will buy this. I will buy it as well. Make it unanimous. And then Devin Singletary. I love this one. Ooh. There are certain players over this back half that I'm so intrigued about, and Devin Singletary is one of them. I agree. Jason brought up the snap count of this last game. You know, what was it, in the 60-something percent? 68 percent. Yeah, I mean, that's great. And he's got such a good matchup against Washington. Devin Singletary buy-sell 10 total touches. I'm buying that. I'm buying it this week. I am, I'm going to sell. Uh, he was – yeah, he was the, – the, the snap count was great, but it, this was also a situation where they were in a negative game script, and he had ended up with six targets. They – they went to the pass game and they were dumping it short to Singletary. 
So I will sell because I believe Buffalo easily wins this game. Um, so it, here is uh, the one I'm not confident in because I think this line is great. He's going to have somewhere in the 9 to 12 right. uh, touches. And um, based on what we saw week one, he had nine touches and – he was. He's getting more involved, getting healthier. I think I'm going to take the over, which coming into the show is going to take the under. So I will. I will buy. The Bills are still a very strange team to me. I I think I've been a little disappointed for fantasy purposes and what their defense has been able to do. And you know, going back, you know, ten points against the Patriots, fourteen against the Titans, twenty-one against the Bengals. The Dolphins hung around for a long part of that game. I don't. I don't doubt that they're a good team, but they just seem like they they needed to beat the Eagles at home this week to show me something, and they they got blown out. So, um, all right, Jason, you bought Devin Singletary. I did. All right, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Check it out at pristineauction.com. Autograph sports memorabilia. Use the code Ballers when you sign up. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All those trades for Lev Bell never came true, Mike. Yes, they they did not. None of the trades, in fact. For the Jets. For anybody. Right, but mostly for the Jets. Yeah, the, the Jets had many, many players. They were... We're going to trade you, and we're going to trade you. <laughs> Robbie Anderson, you're out of here. Lev Bell, you, Adams, you're gone. And oh. now they're right back to work. To talk to the, the management that wanted to trade them. Some organizations, they just don't do it right. <laughs> you know, the, the Patriots just traded Michael Bennett for a, a ham sandwich. Traded mm. him away for a ham right. sandwich. I, they but there wasn't him. rumors. There wasn't a bunch of media disparaging of Michael Bennett. There was. It was just, all right, you're complaining about your playing time. Our, our team is a lead on defense. We're just going to move on and forget that you existed, and, and you know the the Cowboys have him now. The the trade for Michael Bennett just makes me laugh. They, they uh, the seventh rounder is the worst you can get. They got a seventh rounder two years from now. Yeah. They're like, what? just that that's that's the classic Corey Coleman trade. Yeah. Remember when Corey Coleman was shipped out of town? Yes, I would rather be traded for a literal ham sandwich than a seventh rounder two years. Yeah, from one now. of those things is going to pan out. It's going <laughs> to be delicious. But uh, that was it. Was interesting that the Jets did that, and then also what was interesting, it came out later that the Falcons were talking to the Lions, or I should say, the Lions inquired about trading for Devonta Freeman because they have a, a glaring need at the running back position, but Atlanta chose not to trade him. No, they're they're satisfied with Trey Carson. And Ty Lawson or Ty uh, Johnson. Yeah. All right. I this is one of the bigger topics I think for fantasy owners. 49ers running back news updates. Kyle Shanahan said Raheem Mostert quad injury, Matt Breida ankle injury. They didn't practice. He said if they had to go today, it wouldn't be good. I'm really curious about your take on a a kind of cursory Jeff Wilson signing for your fantasy team because. Wilson went down with what looked like a really scary injury. It ended up being a stinger. If the game was last night or tonight, you would have Tevin Coleman and Jeff Wilson. Yes, and, and I think both players would be excellent starts against Arizona for the 49ers who have been able to run. They, they've pretty much had two. Who gets the goal line work? If it's Tevin Coleman and Jeff Wilson. I think you'd end up with Jeff Wilson as more of the goal line guy because yeah. they're going to split the load. And I think Tevin Coleman, while he can also be the goal line guy, he has a, a much more capable skill set on the on the ones and twos as a DJ. It was, if you look at last week, it was hard to read the tea leaves on which guy gets the goal line work because they were blowing him out. So, like, Tevin got it an opportunity, but then Wilson got it later, and then obviously he got hurt. So, I just think nobody's talking about Jeff Wilson. My name is Jeff. And uh, there's an opportunity. It won't just be Tevin Coleman. He only had 13 touches last week in the right. blowout. Jags placed Marquise Lee on injured reserve. He's not been able to stay healthy for years. Brandon no. Cooks, this is big news. Brandon Cooks is visiting a concussion specialist in Pittsburgh. The Rams are on by. They're trying to figure out how he keeps getting concussed so often, things that they could do to help prevent that. But you're talking about a situation for dynasty owners. You start to look at Brandon Cooks and say, how long is this career really going to be? Do you guys have that fear? Uh, it's at least 
in the back of my mind. I don't I don't know if it's a full force like I right, I'm bailing out, man. I'm I'm trading Brandon Cooks immediately. But concussions are extremely scary. Repeated concussions is it's it's scientifically proven. Multiple concussions is is horrendous on the the well being of just your life. Like your quality of life goes way down. And you enter it, a new category with Cooks where regardless of the how long his career is, another concussion right. at any moment means multiple games. It doesn't yeah. mean one game. Correct. And and so the the risk is higher. I don't necessarily worry about the longevity of his career, but I do think I mean it's nice he's got the bye week. Maybe he comes right back. But I have to assume that this is going to be a lengthier absence because the way that concussions work is you need time. It's it's really the repeat head injuries that are are worrisome and so I would expect him to miss a significant amount of time on this current concussion. Sterling Shepard is practicing today. Okay. Could clear the protocol this week. OJ Howard still sidelined with the hamstring injury. I think a player a lot of fantasy owners is excited to see back is um are excited to see back on the field. Chris Herndon limited in practice Come today. Come on, Chris. He could make his debut. And then uh Xavier Howard, this is notable for Robbie Anderson truthers. Uh Xavier Howard is on IR. Yes, the with a Dolphins, knee injury. Dolphins cornerback who's he is an absolute stud. There was a pretty noticeable shift in effectiveness of of the Pittsburgh passing game when when Howard left that game. Don't forget to drop a like it's hot. Check Ooh. check your waiver wire today. You might mm. see Kenny Stills find his way back out there. Uh a number of players you know, people are filling holes for bye weeks. They have to let somebody go. Next week, you got bipocalypse. Six yes. teams on bye, so you can prepare now. Get ahead of it. You know, if you if OJ Howard is out there and you're the Zach Ertz owner, next week he's on bye, and OJ Howard plays Arizona. We've talked a lot about handcuffs, like certain must own handcuffs. If they're owned by your opponent, next week could be when they slip onto mm -hmm. the waiver wire because. Mm. When you're staring down, do I have somebody to fill in on my flex position or hold Malcolm Brown on my bench or whatever, you're going to let those guys go. Yeah. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. You guys ready to do some Keep Trade Cut? Yep. Keep Trade Cut. Mike, I'm looking at the graphic of you up here on the screen. You, you look like there's a couple observations. One, you look like you're really having a hard time deciding whether to keep trade or cut. Yeah, you definitely and, have a headache. And you might be from is that are you from Brazil? No. I mean, that kind of looks like a flag behind you. Oh, I see what you you're know saying. What I, mean? I was looking at my face, and I feel like I look like myself and Matt Patricia are from like Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you had had some bad Chipotle. Mm. With those forehead wrinkles and that beard, man. Yeah, you've been on you've been on the pot a while on that picture. <laughs> in that picture. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy football. All right. Um keep trade cut in season edition. We went to you, to the Foot Clan, to get the most uh popular requests, whether it was Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the players you wanted to know uh, what we thought about them. The number one request by far. Oh uh, yeah is keep trade cut on Robert Woods. Uh, now, not, none of us are cutting Robert Woods. No. But you do have to make a decision with trading deadlines coming up on a simple question. Does Robert Woods bounce back to what you need and want from him as a fantasy player or not? It, yeah, I mean, that is the question because if, he, if you believe he bounces back, then he could be a trade for target. If you don't, then he should be someone you trade. Um, I believe that he will bounce back. I mean, the, the you know you've had um, a lot of, especially you know you look at those first five games. His target counts were phenomenal. You watch the games; some some just barely misses or callbacks on penalties. I don't think you saw a lot missing. Now the last couple weeks, you know, you go back the last three weeks Been and baffling. That's where it, right they're baffling. They're I mean you you would he would be on a 16 game pace of 
uh, 69 targets, which mm, is not nice. Not nice at all. That is, that would be putrid, and I just don't believe that that's the real Robert Woods, the real Rams, the real Goff. I am scared. I'm scared because, look, I acquired him a couple weeks ago on a buy low. I'm scared because when push comes to shove, when Cooper Cup's not available, all of a sudden Gerald Everett or, or Josh Reynolds it becomes the guy that they're looking to. Am I, I'm right that Robert Woods has zero receiving touchdowns on the season. Yes, you are correct. In yeah. the first half of 2018, he was the wide receiver 11 at this point. Right now, he is the wide receiver 39. This is a very big decision for fantasy owners. And what's wild is you had this past game against the Bengals, a team that you can, whatever your offense wants to do, you, you can make it happen. Yeah, see 220 yards for Cooper Cup. Brandon Cooks goes out mm -hmm. immediately. Okay, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, let's see the natural bump up. Cooper Cup, 10 <laughs> targets. What do we see? Oh, Josh Reynolds here with eight targets. And meanwhile, Robert Woods had two. Caught, caught, a, caught 100%. Caught, he caught, did. He caught 100% of his targets. I like week. your spin zone Thank over you. here. But that is very concerning. Yeah, now they are going to their bye week this week. So you can you can have things fixed, or you can utilize him in a package trade. You know, if if you are looking at um, upgrading your roster, and you know he's on buy, and somebody's willing to buy low for a future bounce back. I mean, it, it's hard to trade for a guy who's been disappointing that you want to bounce back on their buy because it's like you really have to wait and see now. For me, the, the decisions for Woods is is really do I hold on to him or do I trade him, and I'm. I'm scared the way Andy is scared that I'm looking to trade him away and just if he if he has a great second half of the season good good for him but I lean on the side that it's well, it, that I, I want out. It's worth noting that the next 3 weeks is bye week this week Pittsburgh which their defense is, yes. has actually been pretty great and then Chicago. So you know it's one of those situations where I think I had I'm to getting make out I had yeah, to make the choice. I'm, I'm out. I don't know if if we're talking in depth about Jared Goff, but he was a drop for me. Oh, that's yeah, that's fine because you've got you've got a you know a month where you're not going to use him. Yeah, and I think you can still sell Robert Woods on the historical past. Yeah, I think and the bad breaks you, and, and the to... and the Brandon Cooks injury, and you can there's a there's a strong trade narrative there. But I would I'm going to have to go trade. Before we move to the next player, want to thank today's sponsor, introducing. The Capital One Walmart Rewards Card earned 5% back at Walmart Online. Games for kids, headphones for dab, a lap, dad, a laptop for mom, doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart Online. You'll also earn 2% at Walmart in-store, restaurants and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One N.A. All right. Keep Trade, cut. David Montgomery. Keep. David Keep. Opportunity. Well, hold on. Oh. You, that was a quick answer. Sorry. And I accept it if you want to give a quick answer. I reserve the right to change. But it's not been... Keep. It's not been good. We don't... If you pulled the uh, studio right now and you said um, you want to put your life in the hands of Matt Nagy, I don't think any of us are doing that. From a trust perspective, so you you know you've had one good week, one good week for David Montgomery in eight weeks, and it was a great week, and you could trade him on the high of that great week. So it, should that be a consideration for fantasy owners to cash in on all this on the quick reaction of keep? So this was a trade for target for me last week. He was one of my second half MVPs. Obviously, if you made that deal, you were very happy. Um, because of his big week. Now that that week is over, and it was so big, I think it's worth at least exploring what you could get because if people believe that this is the new norm, and hey, it could be. I I said uh, yesterday, I think the, the reality is in between, right? It's not as bad as it was, and it's not as good as this last week was either. They play Philadelphia this week. Obviously, not a not a good matchup for a running back. Let me ask you this. I'll, pu I'll put it to you this way, Mike. Rest of season, who do you prefer? Austin Eckler or David Montgomery? Ooh. Um, man, the, the, the change of OC, 
throws a, a wrench in what you can believe right now about Austin Eckler. Like th that has to go up into the air at least a little bit. Does Anthony Lynn actually – did Ken Wisenhunt go out because they want Melvin Gordon to take the ball more? Uh, I think Montgomery's volume is safer, but Eckler has more upside, so I'll go Eckler. What about Philip Lindsay? Would you rather have David Montgomery or Philip Lindsay rest of the season? I would rather have David Montgomery. Jason? I would rather have Philip Lindsay. We've seen him dominate for a, a, he's a long just, stretch. He's trending in the wrong direction. Meanwhile, Montgomery's trending in the right All right, direction. One, for one me. more half point league. James White, rest of season. James White. Over David Montgomery. Yes. Yeah, James White has been incredibly steady. There's. All right, I lied to you. One more. Jordan Howard. <laughs> oh. Jordan Howard or David Montgomery, rest there of season. There you go. That's a tough one. Uh, I would, uh, I think I would take, it, it, so when it comes to thinking about this, the next few weeks are very difficult uh, matchups for the Eagles. You've got Chicago, a bye week, and the Patriots, but their playoff schedule is so nice. I mean, the, you know, I've been struggling a lot with the Eagles, Miami, New York Giants, Washington. Quick side note on that. If you're looking towards the playoffs and you like you don't have the Pats, you don't have the Jets right now, a good stash defense for your playoff run, the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. Here's why I will say keep on David Montgomery and not trade. What you're going to get for David Montgomery is not going to outpace, in my estimation, the potential upside. When you are at this point in the season – and you're telling me, wow, I can go out and get, maybe I can get a Jordan Howard uh, or even a James White. I think I like the idea of maybe I've got a diamond in the rough on my own team. I'm not going to go out and, and get a stalwart guarantee. You know, Austin Eckler's a good example. Even if I traded him for Eckler, okay, what does the new offensive coordinator do? Right. Eckler's had almost no carries in the last few weeks. It's all passing game. So... The possibility of David Montgomery being a second half, you know, Kareem Hunt esque type of player, that's intriguing enough to me to keep him. I love. I mean, twenty seven carries is outrageous. I don't, he's not going to get that. This was a very neutral game script, but the five targets with the neutral game script, I'm very interested there. All right, keep trade cut on one of the first half's biggest surprises. I, I'll go as far as to say stud wide receiver. Yeah. Mm, Terry like McLaurin of the Washington Redskins. He is the wide receiver 21 through seven games, 12.8 points per game. Last week, you had the quarterback Swapsky. He was only four for 39. Keep trade cut. He's got Buffalo, then the bye week, then the Jets. And I, he also plays for the Washington Redskins. I believe yeah. that Ter Terry McLaurin is a stud, and he's going to have an – incredible future and a great career but he's a trade to me because if you look at what not a trade to you but a trade you're uh, saying you if would I trade have him. him I'm floating him in trades because he's been so good in such a bad situation the odds of that continuing for the season are less than 50 percent the odds of Case Keenum being out there for the rest of the season yeah. are less than 50 percent the, the new regime wanting to run the ball that we've seen the last couple of weeks have coincided with his worst games of the season. So if you can capitalize on what he did through the first six weeks of the season, I think trading him and getting value, uh, you know, you just you expect him to have a worse second half than he had a first half, and that's the, those are who you try to capitalize on and trade. You know, one of the things that happened for Terry McLaurin in the first half is the ever unpredictable touchdown dependency. You know, the first three games of the season he scored, and he had two touchdowns in week five. So I think you're right. He's a little propped up on a team with a lot of variables. Would you rather have Terry McLaurin or Cortland Sutton rest of the season? <laughs> oh, man, that's funny because of the, because of the quarterback right. uh, issue there. You certainly don't have Joe Flacco, so... You've got to make a decision now. Someone offers you those two guys. I will take I, I would McLaurin. Go McLaurin as well. What we know is Callahan, while he wants to be run heavy, there will be many situations where he has to throw. And he would like to continue to work in the NFL. So he's going to go to Case Keenum as long as he possibly can. 
in in my opinion. Like, is McLaurin a keep or a trade for you, Mike? I'm going. To, I'm going to keep him. All right. Here's a here's a player that is actually you you can go keep trade or cut on finally yeah. finally. Damian Williams, running back of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's the RB forty one right now. Keep trade cut Damian Williams. Oh man, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> this, you have this, this there's be... a fourth option which is which is cry with him on your bench like uh, keep. It, keep is usually reserved for like no I think there's better days ahead you want to hold on to him there, you know I don't think I can cut him with all the buys coming up and he the 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 opportunity to this would have seemed easy until LaShawn McCoy fumbled the ball was benched Damian Williams comes in and then looked more like 2018 Damian Williams than we have seen this entire season so it's it's very difficult. I would love to trade him, but I will reluctantly keep if I have to. Yeah, I mean, you're you're probably not going to be able to trade him. Maybe in some package, maybe to the shady owner. You know, it, it's indicative to me that the Chiefs were the the Chiefs were in the rumor mill for some of the big name running backs out there, like right. Bell or or Melvin Gordon. It, and if there was even a little bit of communication there, it says that the Chiefs are going. Man, I really wish we had a, you know, what they had to begin last year with Kareem Hunt, a real stud running back. What they had, what Andy Reid had with Lashawn McCoy earlier in his career. You know, someone that they could rely on and help this offense. And Doesn't I don't think it? they. Doesn't it help to look at Damian Williams more in the handcuff category? Because when you're making decisions, I mean, would you rather have Damian Williams on your team or Alexander Madison? Would you rather, you know, if you treat Damian right. Williams as a handcuff to McCoy, as a player that, okay, if McCoy goes down, Damian Williams by necessity will have a ton of work on a great offense, I, that makes him rosterable to me in the category of handcuff. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, sol that's a solid point. You, that's why, I mean, you're saying there's that fourth option because you're not going to cut him. Yeah, how could you cut a running back that has such an opportunity to get work well, for I, the Chiefs? If you're the Dalvin Cook owner, do you cut Damian Williams to sign Alexander Madison? Yes. So that would be a but circumstance that makes sense, right? Yeah, if I have Dalvin Cook, I would do that as I prepare for the playoffs. Otherwise, I would prefer to have Damian. Okay. All right. Um, Ty Johnson. Oh, the biggest. So disappointing waiver flop of the year yeah um so what's interesting you come out trey carson has a seemingly the the, -la -la. the -la -la, uh has the work gets 12 carries to uh ty johnson seven carries he did get four targets as far as the snap counts though um you know it, it still was ty johnson at 40 percent. i mean that's not a great number but that was better than than Trey Carson. That's not going to get it done, though. Forty per, you, you played 40% of the snaps. You were against the New York Giants, one of the most plus mashups for fantasy running backs. Where it's difficult for Ty Johnson, this is take the lumps. Yeah, I was, I was in on spending a good amount of fab to pick up Ty Johnson because you were trying to read the situation where early on, the Lions cut C.J. Anderson. They're moving forward. It's just carry on. It's Ty Johnson and J.D. McKissick. Carryon gets hurt. Ty Johnson is the guy who comes in, plays 65% of the snaps, getting all the work, gets the goal line work. Coach Patricia comes out and says, yeah, we're going to move forward with McKissick and Ty Johnson. And then it's four guys going right out of the gate. Yeah, so he's a, I feel like uh, I learned what him. I needed to learn yeah. in one game, which is that the team's not – you know, willing to give him the majority workload. I think the team realized they don't trust Ty Johnson as much as they thought they did. Yeah, or or you're just managing a player that you felt is more complimentary and not. I mean, if you bring a practice squad player and bring him in and give him nearly double the carries of a guy that you dump C.J. Anderson for. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel like we we know all we need to know. So he's a he's a. It's it's how it's hard to spin that fab and cut him, but the you can, the you sunk it, cost fallacy is you you've got to you've got to cut ties with once new information comes. Hey, 
we're wrong from time to time. Yeah. But why stay in the grave that you've dug, climb out? And the truth is, <clears throat> you're not starting Ty Johnson this week. That would be borderline impossible to say based on last week and his, you know, seven carries for 25 yards. He's in your lineup. So, okay, you keep him. And now he goes out and has a good game. Okay, you didn't get that game, but now you go, okay, well, maybe he's maybe he is the guy. Well, now it's Chicago. Mm -hmm. You starting him there? You starting him against Chicago? So now it's like the next couple weeks. And then while it's you're, Dallas. While you're needing a start, he's pretty unreliable. So while I'm not ever like a must cut for any running back that has, uh, you know, a path to touches, I would rather keep Ty Johnson than a hopeful wide receiver. Um, he is cuttable. Yeah. All right. A couple of really highly requested players, a situation I think people want us to get into a little bit, and that's the running back situation in Arizona, Oy. consisting of David Johnson, Chase Edmonds, and now Kenyon Drake. David Johnson, keep trade cut. Ugh. San Francisco, we haven't really seen any public indications that David Johnson will be active. He did not practice yesterday. Dave. Other than head coach Cliff Kingsbury calling him day to day again, but you we say this in the off season with the follow the money. Well you gotta follow what the Cardinals have done. They're a three and four three, four and one team. They are in a division where they're not going to beat out the Rams, Seahawks, or undefeated 49ers. The path to the playoffs is pretty much non existent for them, despite having an okay record. And so then you say, why did you trade for Kenyon Drake on a one-half-year rental? Right. And that's the answer is so that you could fill a roster. That's the answer. You brought him in because you've got, you've got problems with David Johnson yeah. and Chase Edmonds. David Johnson, to me, is a trade for sure because you can still get – even while he's injured right now, right. he's being told he's day-to-day. -day. And – Look, that's not the is same. He, you're saying he's being told that by Cliff? Like Cliff, <laughs> he's like, my ankle's I'm, the size of a house. No, you're day you're to day, day, day David. David, get back out there tomorrow <laughs> if you can't go today. No, but the the news on him is still day to day. You know, he's he's he's. I think our audience, we've followed this a little bit tighter, and we realize that he's pro he's not going to play this week. And, you know, you've, you've got a rough schedule coming up. San Francisco, then a nice one at Tampa. Actually, Tampa no, Bay is that's, terrible no, against the run. No, it's not. It's deceptive. It's a trap game. Yes. Because they're actually great against the run so yes. far. Then San Francisco again. Then a bye week. Yeah. So, you know, you're not going to enjoy David Johnson for the next month. If you can capitalize on him, trade the name. I've seen a lot of David Johnson trades going down on Twitter right now. And, you know... I. Don't, you know, don't trade him for garbage, but go out there and, and let people know he's on the block. Let them come to you because some people think I'm going to buy low on David Johnson and, and get something good, but you're, you're not going to be happy the next month. And if something comes out where he goes on IR, I don't think anyone's going to be unfathomably shocked with a back injury or he's not been a model of health, right? Well, you definitely have a in injury risk even if he comes back because yep. of the nature of the injury if i'm a team that's you know about 500 i'm still clawing my playoff position is not looking great then i'm going to trade david johnson we're talking when you roll out that schedule and the bye week week 13 that's when you'll actually be glad Possibly. That's when you may be glad that David Johnson's on your roster. So if I'm trying to get in the playoffs and I'm fighting, I'm going to trade him away. If I have the, an undefeated team, a one or two loss team, I would be willing to buy low on David Johnson. And trade for him? Yeah. Okay. Just, just for but, the... But that's a very particular situation of if he's back week 13 and he's healthy, I'm going to be happy that he's on my team. Chase Edmonds keep trade cut. 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 Yeah, cut. He, he's. I mean, try and trade him, <laughs> but you're gonna have to cut him. Yeah. Talk I mean. about a quick change. Yes, that was a roller coaster. That's just injury, though. You know. Yep. Um, let's go ahead and get into the Thursday night breakdown. Thursday night breakdown. All right. 
the 7-0 and 49ers, the team with the number two pick in the NFL draft, is undefeated. And they travel to Arizona on Halloween to take on the Cardinals. <laughs> Cardinals 3-4-1. and one. And the 49ers are nine and a half point favorites. It's a 43 point over under. How are we looking at this game? You know, for the first time in a while, I abandon all hope. Ye who enter for the Cardinals. Yes. Well, I I was actually going to start with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo because, you know, a lot of quarterbacks that have been hyped up over the course of the season have seen those bubbles burst, Baker Mayfield, uh, players that you kind of you look to to put up big numbers, and you're like, okay, that's not the reality about them. When you're 7-0, and nobody pays attention. Isn't that the truth? Oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't really – we're not looking at Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, maybe he's been a streamer once or twice on the show, but we've practically not said his name. You haven't needed him in the real NFL. The San Francisco 49ers have not needed one more iota from him than they than he has given them. So he hasn't disappointed them. So you're not talking about him as underperforming. And, and from a fantasy standpoint, while he's done jack squat, you also wonder if you you don't you don't count him out because he hasn't been needed. You know what I mean? Like if, if push comes to shove. And Jimmy Garoppolo is needed, and they need to come back in a game, or they need to air it out, and then he fails. That's when you start worrying. Right now, you just haven't. It's been a shaky year statistically, and you're right. Everything you're saying is 100 percent right. But I don't know that he. We don't know if he can step up and do that. I mean, just looking at the last three weeks from a statistical standpoint, he has two touchdowns in three weeks and three interceptions on the year. He's nine touchdowns, seven interceptions. It's not great, Bob. No, I mean, and he's not he's not throwing for a ton of yardage, 175, 151. And you said, like you said, their defense has been great. They haven't needed him. He's been a glorified game manager. I will say, though, <clears throat> he played in the slot bowl. Like, you got to take that game out completely for everyone who was involved. Right. And then the following week, 80% completion, 18 for 175 and two. And he actually has a number one wide receiver now in Emmanuel Sanders. Combine that with George Kittle. like That's a massive upgrade to me. And Arizona, I'm looking at our stream finder for our Foot Clan supporters. Arizona is, is number man, number one, man. That's where you want to be. You want to target the Cardinals for your quarterback position. They've given up a top two performance three times. There's only been two games this entire season. They haven't given up a top I six am, I imagine option. that. I but, imagine that those – top two performances all were when Patrick Peterson was not in the lineup. Is that correct? That the, the yes. Well, they, no, 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 no. There was Drew Brees just went ham. He was top on, two. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, the Cardinals stayed in the game last week into the third quarter before the offense gave the saints a really short field. They're a better defense with Patrick Peterson. They show, yes. they, they've shown this. I don't think that they're a cakewalk at home for Jimmy Garoppolo who hasn't done it against anybody yet. So I wouldn't be playing Jimmy Garoppolo outside of, you know, if you need to stream him, you could do worse because of the matchup, but we just haven't seen it. I just think it's interesting. We don't focus or talk about him a lot because they've run the ball and they've played defense. Would you rather play Kyler in this matchup or Jimmy Garoppolo? I guess mm. I'd rather play Jimmy Garoppolo. I would play Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. yeah. Kyler in this matchup, I mean, you talk about worst of all matchups. Right now on the season, the 49ers defense – they're giving up 7.5 fantasy points per game to the quarterback. They are dominating. It's it's un it's unbelievable what they have done recently. Uh, the the San Francisco 49ers. Listen to these uh, fantasy points given up the last four weeks. Zero. That was that was a full week. They gave up exactly zero fantasy. points. Who was that against? That was Baker. Baker. Ah, Baker. Uh, then they gave up a whopping uh, one one point one fantasy point. To Jared Goff, uh, fantasy points. If it's one point one, was it points? Is it points? Is it multiple? 1. I think you. I, whether it is or it's not, I think one. it's appropriate what you did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Uh, then uh, Washington, that you know, that was easy. Three point one fantasy points, and then three point three. Their biggest. Uh, I mean, that's a letdown. That sounds like a made up stat, right? Because you just. Like what? Just complete a pass. Like you complete one pass and you beat almost all those numbers. <laughs> right. Like just one. I mean, twenty-five yard pass and you're at a point. I mean, that's just kind of 
unprecedented what they're doing on defense. Yeah. So yeah, not exciting times for the Cardinals. Kenyon Drake will likely get 12 to 15 touches in this game. For the record, I did have to zoom in on my web browser to make sure it was 1.1 because that was a, <laughs> such a tiny number. And that's what their defense is making people do. So Kenyon Drake, do you on this, is he an RB3 this week? At best. At best. Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, you, you, you mix in 49ers defense with newly acquired. Exactly. If this was a, a super plus matchup, you know, then okay, I'm, I'll am i roll them out as like a low-end RB2, but no, thank you. Yeah, you've also had uh, it, you know, Cliff Kingsbury's talked about he's not going to get, uh, he's going to have a manageable workload. Like he's going, you know, you're talking about. Zach Zander is far more tenured. <laughs> right, exactly. Than, than, but those guys will be splitting, and they'll be splitting against the number two ranked, uh, you know, fantasy points given up to running back. Larry Fitzgerald has put up two stinkers in a row yeah one for 12 two for eight now it it, it's extremely difficult matchup chris conley or larry fitzgerald this week oh um it's likely chris conley that's the decision i had to make in league of record and i'm going chris conley against houston in uh in london over a thursday night larry fitzgerald because the the floor is bad right now when you face san francisco yeah Christian Kirk did come back last week, had a pretty big week, targets, receptions-wise. Are you are you taking a shot on Kirk? Man, it, it, so it's really tough here, right? Eleven it, targets last week, eight receptions, seventy-nine yards. Kirk has been great when he's when he's been out there on the field. He's he's been a good fantasy wide receiver. He's at home uh, to uh, an offense that runs a ton of plays. I mean, there, uh, but you just wonder how good is this. 49ers defense and and they're you know you can make some arguments that they really haven't faced anybody but golf um so maybe they're maybe they're not quite as good Kirk is pretty much the only player from the Cardinals that I think yeah you're okay starting yep I'm worried with Fitz I would prefer to not start Kyler but you uh, can flex Christian Kirk I think you can flex Christian Kirk on the other side of the ball, Emmanuel Sanders made his debut last week. Not a lot of yardage or anything, but he, he did catch a touchdown pass. What are your expectations for Emmanuel Sanders in this game and then moving forward? In this game, you should ha see a lot of Patrick Peterson. Not a lot of options on the outside, outside of Emmanuel Sanders right now. They're doing anything. You know, they're creative in the way that they use Debo Samuel in the running game and in the screen game. But from a downfield threat standpoint, Sanders is kind of all they got. Yeah, I mean, so Patrick Peterson wasn't really used in a shadow situation uh, last week Not against fully. Michael Thomas. So, you know, because Kyle Shanahan will be equally creative with Emmanuel Sanders, I think you can start Sanders. Um, Sanders or Kirk? That's a great question. I would go Kirk based on volume. I, I expect I tend more, to agree there. I expect more targets, more passing work from the Arizona Cardinals if the Niners are up and running – easily. I mean, it's been the recipe all year for the Niners where they just don't have to throw the ball that much. It was very exciting, though, for Emmanuel Sanders' future to see that week one with this brand new team, he played on 82% of the snaps. And if you look back at what wide receivers were getting like back when Pettis was getting the number one snaps at the position, he would be in the 60s. Look, so if, they're, if, they're ready. If they, you have Dante Pettis, you do everything you can to not have him on the field. <laughs> Isn't that right, Brooks? Uh, not totally agreed there. Okay. All right. Not on your fantasy roster. He doesn't belong there. Okay. What about a dynasty fantasy roster? Oh, wait, Brooks? do you yes. have him in dynasty, Brooks? No, I do, but I'm going to trade him to Brooks. Wait, I do in oh, another Bro league. Brooks would trade up. I do in another league. For, for lettuce? Dante <laughs> lettuce? lettuce? Dante lettuce? I want to oh, have him in dynasty. Wilting. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd trade him. I, I want to get into the mailbag uh, a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Mailbag. Mailbag! All right, Foot Clan, if you've got a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's go to the voicemail hotline right now. Hey, this is uh, Anthony calling in from Lancaster, PA. I am just want to know, man, what's going on with tight end Zach Ertz? Do I start him? Do I sit him or what? He has been doing nothing all fantasy years. Give me some help here, guys. I mean, this it's an unfortunate and pretty easy answer. 
You play him. You play him. Uh, unless you unless you are someone that was able to have picked up Hunter Henry or you also drafted Darren Waller and you've got both these guys, then sure, there are, you know, within that top eight, there are guys I would start over Zach Ertz. I don't see Zach Ertz in any way, shape, or form the same way that you saw him at the beginning of the year where you say, well, he's a top three guy. No, if I had Darren Waller and Zach Ertz, I'm starting Darren Waller. Zach but, Ertz has been a top 12 option twice. Yeah, he's, I he's dug into this good. a little bit yesterday on a target standpoint since week five. Ertz is still in the top five in target yes. since week five. He's at, he's still above Dallas Goddard in that span, although they're close. And Goddard's seeing a lot of playing time. But he's still somebody that you pretty much have to play if, like Jason said, you don't have one of the upper echelon options because of the targets. I mean, what else can you lean on at the at the position? And maybe this offense starts to find itself in the red zone more often with Deshaun Jackson's return. Big game last week against Buffalo. Look, it doesn't feel good no, right now because you bought him to be something he's not. And, I mean, like, what's on your waiver wire? Darren Fells? Even if it's a guy like Joni Smith, you're still playing Zach Ertz. Correct. All right, here's a question. I, I've seen a lot of this. In our league of record, I, I know the answer to the question. Megan in Asheville, North Carolina, wants to know, should I pivot from Lamar Jackson this weekend against the Patriots <laughs> and pick up a streaming option because they don't have a backup? Or do you just trust Lamar Jackson? If I could pivot, I would. I If I could pivot, I would. Example, Josh Allen. I would play Josh Allen this week over Lamar Jackson. How about Gardner Minshew? I would Against Houston? Yeah. I would probably play Gardner. I would play Gardner. And that it, it's hard because Lamar's got you to this point. Yeah, let's go down the rabbit hole. Kirk Cousins against the Chiefs. I would play Kirk Cousins. Derek Carr. I would play Lamar. Over Kirk? Okay, so we've we've found the end of your maze. Yeah. Derek, I, think, I think Gardner and Josh Allen, and then I'm probably out. Derek Carr? Lions? No. I would okay. go Lamar. Yeah, I mean, um, Lamar can score points without scoring points. If he throws no touchdowns, he could still have a fine fantasy game, right. and that's just not normal. Yeah. And they they do have two weeks to prepare as well, coming off the bye. That that matters more for some teams than others. Some game's teams, also at home. That matters a lot, too. Yeah, some teams, you know, they're, they've got one of those – you give Andy Reid, you give Bill Belichick extra time to prepare. They always crush – and Harbaugh's one of those coaches. He's really good coach. He's got two weeks to prepare the team for this matchup. So you can't crush the Patriots. Nobody can crush the Patriots. No. Certainly not. No, you're not going to crush the Patriots. But you could pleasantly surprise Lamar Jackson in a six point league has never scored under fifteen point seven points. I expect a game far more like the the matchup against Pittsburgh though. One hundred sixty one with a touchdown, but he had a bunch of turnovers. Of course, he had the seventy rushing yards, which kind of salvages it but i just don't see a ceiling against the patriots neo yes neo in oh. washington state wait the one from the matrix yeah nice did he ask this inside of the matrix or outside it looks like matrix? outside i think it's outside because we can see it robbie anderson or curtis samuel rest of season unless we're in the matrix oh no oh man maybe we are oh, oh, oh man What's his question, Neo? <laughs> Robbie Anderson or Curtis Samuel rest of season? Or Lawrence Fishburne? Mm. Robbie Anderson, fish. Curtis Samuel, or Lawrence Fishburne? Whenever you have a chance to get Lawrence Fishburne on your fantasy team. He's another one of those um, Hollywood actors whose heads keep getting larger and larger. You know how I <laughs> Oh, like, totally. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, John absolutely. Travolta is the big pinnacle example of like twice the size head as he used to have. As... One who will soonly be in inducted. Soonly, <laughs> soonly be. To, to soonly the, be to the big head committee. Yeah, you are on your way, dude. I can't imagine you. You watch what you say about of those of us. But it, the cool thing is, like, big heads. when you go into the the ballpark early and it's like Mike Wright bobblehead night, it's actually like realistic. It's like life. A Mike size. Wright bobblehead would not. That's a lot of plastic. It, it wouldn't function. The first time you go to bobble, the head, it, the head would break. Yeah. It would topple yeah. over. All right, so if you throw Fish, Fishburne out, Robbie Anderson or Curtis Samuel? Uh, I'm, I'm taking the shot on Robbie. I will take Robbie as well. I like both of these guys uh, as far as their upside, but I'm going Robbie, so it's unanimous. All right, last one. Nelson in Alaska. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Should I try <laughs> 
That was one of you the dumbest even, things. Ever. You even threw in the arm action. You're darn right. <laughs> you were shivering. I'm nothing if was, not committed. Have either of you been to Alaska? No. I have not. I would love to I go. I would like to go I, there, too. Th- everything I hear. Everybody gets a moose there, right? Like they, right. They you have, get a moose. Yeah, you, you get a moose. You, when well, you that's get what the, they rent out at the airport. When you get off the plane? There's no cars. No, it's Enterprise rent a moose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this, this this is great. Never look him in the eye. No, 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 no. Just hop on the back. It's safe. Should I trade Josh Jacobs to acquire Lev Bell? What about Chris Carson? Ooh. Both are my number one running backs in separate leagues. I think this probably illustrates that we've talked a lot about Lev Bell's schedule over the second half and the possibility of buying low on him. I don't think trading Josh Jacobs or Chris Carson for Lev Bell is buying low on Lev Bell. I think it's very difficult to trade a, a RB1 who's actually producing right now, and there's no – you don't see a, a path where that's just going to fall off of a cliff to trade them for the hope of Le'Veon Bell. I'm not trading a strong RB1 for yeah, him. Yeah, that's – I think Andy said it right that that's not buying low. Now, would David Montgomery – be oh yeah! Love. Oh you yeah! Know, you and package, I would do that. Yes. Because David Montgomery with yes. someone else off the big week try to get Lev Bell. That's Absolutely. a great strategy. That could work. I would trade David Montgomery and Austin Eckler to get Lev Bell. Interesting. And that's not to say I think Lev Bell is going to dominate. You know, top five second half. I'm but not, I'm but not I like off. the I like the guaranteed work. Sure, and and that's uh, that's nice, and I think that that trade could absolutely work. But I'm not off the Austin Eckler train yet. I'm, I don't think just because Wizen Hunt left. I mean, for all we know, Austin Eckler will be more involved. I mean, we just don't know yet. So sure. I'd like I'd like a week with the new OC and see what happens. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Marlon Mack signed jersey yesterday, $47.79. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not want to miss tomorrow's show, especially on the YouTubes. It's Halloween. We, oh. Oh, we always celebrate the holiday in style. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you go subscribe, ring the bell. Be ready. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> that's going to be it for today's episode. Appreciate the foot clan out there supporting the podcast and, it's gonna be a gonna be a heck of a week, guys. It will be. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.